Welcome to another edition of Ask the AD. Just a normal Ask the AD, <laughs> right? Here on this December evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is that you are watching. I'm glad you could join us. Brian Smolder, Gene Taylor, Director of Athletics. And it's a special edition of Ask the AD. All kidding aside, as K-State has announced their 35th head football coach in its history, Chris Kleiman. And this has been, I know, something that you knew was coming yeah. from the very start, from the moment you got here. And we'll get into some of the details I'm sure that people want to know about. But I, I guess the first thing I wanted to ask you about was just in general about the process. I'm sure there's some bit of relief that it's over. <laughs> uh, just how did this all come about and how did it go for you? Well, it's kind of a little bit of everything, Brian. It's, it's exciting, you know, to be able to, you know, to replace a legend like Coach, Coach Snyder is, is something that, you know, you don't want to take too much and put too much pressure on yourself or, uh, or the process because you want to make sure that you focus on the candidates and what you're looking for. Uh, but it's exciting to be able to, you know, you got a chance, I got a chance, uh, and myself and Kenny and, and Jill Shields that uh, were part of the process, got a chance to meet some great coaches. Um, as one of the uh, Nike reps who I know said that we were out in New York City where we did most of the interviews, uh, we were in a target-rich environment with all the coaches out there for the <laughs> National Football Foundation. Um, but it was, it was stressful. Uh, we, we wanted to do it in a timely fashion, but yet very quickly with, with obviously the national signing date. That was a lot, that added probably some new pressure than maybe other searches in the past. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was all of it, exhilarating, and, and we, we learned it with a lot from other coaches. I mean, it was a lot of about football and what they believed in and, and who they were as people. And, and so it was, it, was, it was a fun process, it really was. There's a lot to get here and unpack with this, um, with obviously with Coach Kleiman. You obviously have a history with him at North Dakota State. You obviously understand the magnitude of the hire and, and the coming into K-State and this, but what made it the right fit? You said you interviewed many other people, and I'm sure any of them would have been just great. What made Chris the right fit? You know, I, I've known Chris, obviously. I hired him uh, before I left North Dakota State. When, Chris, when, uh, when Craig Bowl left to go to Wyoming, uh, Chris was one of the candidates I looked at, defensive coordinator, um, but I never got a really chance to work with him as a head coach, but I knew the pressure he was facing that first year. They lost 25 seniors. Everybody at North Dakota State and Fargo expected them to just waltz back to a national championship, and he didn't really have all, all the pieces. And, and then the quarterback that he had uh, obviously was very good, but got hurt for most of the season. So, But uh, just watching him man manage that pressure told me a lot about him, and as he continued to grow the program and take it from three national championships on his own. I said, okay, uh, this guy can coach football. I've just watched him coach. I watched his teams play. They don't beat themselves. Um, they're, they're very, they're very, you know, very defensive uh, minded, but yet they score some points. There was a lot of things about him. And then just his culture and character. Uh, I knew that personally. So I, once I got here and felt the culture and what Kansas State was about, what Kansas State football was about, I was like, oh boy, there's a lot of similarities. And I knew he would be a great fit personally. His family is awesome. They be, they're going to be great in the community. But he's going to be the kind of coach that our fans will gravitate towards. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of passion. And his football teams will be prepared. And they will be prepared all the way through the fourth quarter. That's one thing. Every time I've seen a North Dakota State team, and I was at Iowa across the aisle from them, and they came and they took us apart in the fourth quarter when I was at Iowa, and they're a very, very prepared football team, and that's what we're going to get here. And there'll be a lot more to come on climbing over the next couple of days, Coach, yeah, as he comes into town. Um, you know, anytime you have a search and go through a process, as you mentioned the timely factor of it and trying to be judicious with Coach Snyder and pay homage to what he did here and what he built, but also, as you said, with the early signing period, get through the whole process. There were many media reports that come <laughs> out uh, through that time that ha some may have a hint of truth, others are not. I know you can't respond to all that stuff. Any of that stuff that can we saw over the last uh, <laughs> seven days be accurate? Um, you know, there was some of it, but there was a lot of inaccuracies too. And, you know, I, the one thing when you're sitting in the have a job as the athletic director, you have a lot of advisors. Um, <laughs> and you get a lot of advice from a lot of people. I got a lot of advice via email and Twitter uh, during the process. Uh, some of it was reacting to inaccuracies and some of it was reacting to, you know, those things that were accurate. So I was probably about 50%, which I always find kind of interesting uh, how that gets out there. We were, you know, pretty much holed up in New York City and it's pretty easy to get lost in New York City with most of the candidates. We didn't do a lot of flying around. Like I said, we were able to get everybody there. Uh, so I was a little surprised at how some of that gets out, but you know, you have agents and agents talk and they're trying to get their candidate put out there. And so, I, um, 
but so uh, there was some of it that was true, and some of the some of the candidates were accurate, some weren't. Um, some of the reasons as uh, candidates fell off or you know weren't actually weren't accurate at all. Um, so those things you just kind of have to kind of ignore and go back to my earlier point and just stay focused on the process. That's really important to stay focused on the candidates you are talking to because when the when the stuff that's out there that's not accurate, it messes up those candidates that you're talking to because then they get nervous and they go, well, are you talking to so-and-so and am I still part of the deal? And that's where the search firm really comes in handy because they keep those candidates involved that you want to stay involved as you begin to pare it down. As we get into the brass tacks of this and, and Coach Kleiman moving forward, and he will address some of this in his own press conference, but were there any stipulations put on him uh, or any of the candidates for that matter about the current coaching staff and retention? No, there's not. And I think, uh, you know, as you go through this process, we have some really great assistants. And what all we told every candidate is, look, we have some great staff. You, we encourage you to uh, interview as many or all of them. Uh, whatever you feel your needs are because obviously they have coaches that they're familiar with and coaches that they've coached with or, or people that they've worked with that maybe are at other institutions. But we never want to say you have to hire somebody. Uh, that puts that coach in a bad position. It puts the assistants in a bad position if you think about it because they only want to work if, they, if they're wanted to. But we did tell them and here are our candidates or here are our staff that we think would be great additions if you wanted to keep them. But that's up to you as the head coach. So there was never a stipulation on any uh, whether it was Coach Kleiman or any of our candidates, and there was never any real financial issues. I mean, we they knew exactly kind of what the contract was going to be, and those that were interested knew what our parameters were. And, uh, it, it, you know, it, people take jobs and don't get jobs for a lot of different reasons. The um, Moving forward, Coach Kleiman will announce his staff, I'm sure, when he is ready. How soon do you expect those pieces to fall in place? Well, you know, ha as quickly as possible. Again, recruiting, we're going to uh, bring a coach in in the next couple of days. Uh, we are, he is going to coach through the playoffs if they should win uh, against South Dakota State in the semifinals. He'll coach through the national championship. He'll balance that with being here as well, and that's going to be important. I think people need to understand that. Um, so we're going to get him in. He's going to come in uh, after the semifinal game and get and see recruits and call people and start working on his staff. So I would imagine he's going to have uh, some of his staff put together fairly quickly and some will maybe take a little bit longer. You know, hopefully closing in on a fourth national championship, 67-6. Uh, and six. I'm sure that's uh, been bantied about by everybody who <laughs> knows the stats of this guy, but what he's done has been truly remarkable. What has been the response from donors and fans that you have talked with since the announcement, since the release has been published? You know, since the announcement has been very, very positive. You know, I, I, uh, I'm sure there's still folks that are you know, not sure uh, about Chris's qualifications, and I would tell anybody to not worry about that uh, <laughs> because you mentioned his record. We, what it's really, really hard to do, no matter what level you coach, is to win a national championship, is to win one. Uh, he's been a part of six out of seven as a defensive coordinator head coach, and he's a chance to win his fourth. That's extremely difficult to do. And the playoff run each week to prepare for a different team is extremely challenging. Uh, and I think our fans need to understand that we're getting an extremely qualified, well-seasoned coach that's going to come in here and build and believes in winning and winning the right way and and likes to win and, and that's what we're going to get so um, I, I think the negative reaction is they just don't understand the FCS level uh, they don't understand the quality of athletes at that level they don't understand the quality of coaches at that level and once they get a chance to know Chris uh, so I think but a majority of the stuff that I've seen since the announcement has been very very positive nationally in particular. Yeah, and it's not as if this is breaking new ground. I mean, FCS coaches having success at Power 5 FBS schools has happened before. Jim Tressel, Jim Harbaugh, Frank Beamer. I mean, it, this is it's it, a pretty good list. No doubt, and, and hopefully it will continue with, with his, uh, his tenure here at Kansas State. What would you like to say to the fans, uh, I guess, after this announcement? You know, I would, I would tell this to the fans. I love our passion. Uh, I love our fan base. I, you know, yes, I sometimes will get, you know, Twitter messages that are mad at me or email messages. But the one thing that I will ask in our fans, because I think they care uh, about our program in general, we're typically not a nasty fan base or a really mean fan base. They're passionate and they care and they want to be successful. Uh, I just ask you to have patience and give Coach a chance and let him build a staff and let him come in here and get to know the team and recruit. Uh, before we overreact and, and, and be negative without a chance to really, because I think that's what we really are as a fan base. Maybe there's some initial reaction that are, you know, just a knee jerk, and then all of a sudden, eh, maybe, and that's how I've gotten some of the emails, to be honest with you. 
I've got a few emails say, oh, gee, maybe I should have slowed my, you know, slowed down a little bit. And that's what I ask all you guys is just have patience. You're going to find out he's a tremendous person. He's a tremendous family man. He's a tremendous amount of character. He's going to treat our student athletes with the utmost respect. They're going to play hard for him, and we're going to win football games under Coach uh, Kleiman's leadership. And looking forward to seeing his impact and getting him here and meeting with people. I think that will do a lot to dissuade a lot of that uh, negativity that's out Abs there. Absolutely, and he'll be a tremendous community member, um, and, and I think people, once they get a chance to meet him, are going to like him uh, rather quickly. He has experience for placing a legend, doing so up at uh, North Dakota State and with Craig Bull. Took a great program to legendary status, and hopefully looking forward to him to do the same here. I saw a quote once that said, it's one thing to take a bad team to good, it's another team to take a great team to greatness, and that's what he's done at North Dakota State. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it very much. Director of Athletics, Gene Taylor, of course, always available through Twitter and email, <laughs> right? We'll be hearing from Coach Kleiman very shortly. In the meantime, we'll catch you next time on Ask the AD. For Gene Taylor, I'm Brian Smoller. Thank you for watching.